Lois and the glad of Virgin Mary, Alleluia. For the Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who through thee the resurrection of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, didst vouchsafe to give joy to the whole world, grant we beseech thee that through his mother, the Virgin Mary, we may obtain the joys of everlasting life, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Introducibus Dominus in terram fluentum lacat vel, Alleluia. Utem et e vux Dominus sempre sit in orde vesto, Alleluia, Alleluia. Confitemini Dominum et invocati nomen eius, annunciante e indigente et opera eius. Gloria Patria, Filio et Spiritu et Santo, sic oderat in principio et nunc et sempre, et in secula seculorum, Amen. Introducibus Dominus in terram fluentum lacat vel, Alleluia. Et ut lux domini sempre sit in orde vesto, Alleluia, Alleluia. Ia eleison, Ia eleison, Ia eleison. Christa eleison, Christa eleison, Christa eleison. Iria eleison, Iria eleison, Iria eleison. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Et in terra pax omnibus non e voluntatis, laudamus te, benedicimus te, adoramus te, glorificamus te. Gracias agimus tibi prote magum gloriam tua. Domine Deus, Rex Celestis, Deus Pater Omnipotens, Domine Filum Unigenite, Iaesu Christe, Domine Deus, Aonius Dei, Filius Patris, qui tolis peccatum mundi miserere nobis, qui tolis peccatum mundi suscipe deprecationem nostram, qui seres et exeram patris miserere nobis, Quoniam tu solus sanctus, tu solus dominus, tu solus altissimus, Iesu Christe, cum sanctus spiritu in gloria Dei Patris. Amen. Axo vobis et cum spirito tuo. Parlemus. In legus, qui solennitati pascali, mundo remedie populisti, populum tum quaesmus celesti dono prosequere, Ute perfectam libertatem, quam sequi meriatur, 
e dal vita profici a tempi eternam. Per Domino nostro, un Gaius in Cristo, un Filio tu, qui te che in Dio regna con i retati Spiritus Santi Deus, per la mia secula seculorum. Amen. Lexio a tu non posto loro, e di Ebusilis, stans prefus in medio plebis dixit, vidi fratres, vos citis quod faltum es verbum per universam judeam, incipiens in ima Galilea, vos baptismum, quod predicavit Ioannes, Iesum a Nazaret, Quomo non si per un Deus Spiritus Santo, e di pute, qui per transit benefaciendo, e sanando a un esoffresso sa diavolo, quoniam Deus era con vino. E nos teste sumus omnium que fecit in regione iudeorum e Gerusalem, que vociderum suspetentes in vino. Unc Deus suscitavit essi die e dedite un manifestum fieri, non omni populo, se testibus per adunatis a Deo, nobis qui maducavimus e bevimus cum vino, posquam resurrecti cabotris. E precepit nobis predicare populo e testificarvi qui a ipse est, e qui constitutus est a Deo iudex vigorum et motuorum. Cui faunes profeti testimoniem per iben, remissionem per cotorum, et citore per nome Deus omnes, qui credunt in Deo. Deo gratia. Ec dies quam feci dominus et ultremus et decemur in Ea, dicat non quisra e alquoniam bonus, quoniam in seculum misericordia eius. Alleluia, alleluia! Angelus Domini discendi de cielo, et accedens revolvit lapitem, et sedebat super eius. Sancti Vangeli secundum Ducam, gloria tibi Domini. In ino tempore due scicitulis Iesu i bant vipse die in castellum, quod erat in spazio stadiordum se sezza ginta a Jerusalem, nomine Emmeus, et ipsi lupe bantur ed impicem de his omnibus que acciderum, et factum est un tabirare giore se conquerere, et ipse Iesu, sapot in quantu fida cuminis, Ocli auti melorum te levantur, ne eo manuscere. Ed ed ad illos, qui sunt i semones, quos confertis ad impicem ambulantes, et est est triste? Ed respondens unus qui nomen Cleopas, dixi te, tu solus peribrinus es in Jerusalem, et non conuvisti que factus sunt in illatis diebus? Qui vos ille dixi, que? Ed dixerunt, De Iesu, Nazareno, qui fuit vir profeta potens in opere et semone, corram Deo et omni populo, et quomo dovream tradiderum sumi sacerdotes e principies nostri in damnazione mortis, 
et crucificerum Deum. Nos autem sperabamus quia ipse esse dedum curus Israel, et non super hec omnia, tessie dies est odie, quod hec facto sunt. Sed et mulieris credam de ex nostris terulerum nos, quae anti lucem fluerum de monumentum, et non inventum copreius, venerum dicente de se si, et si ambisione mangelorum vidisse, qui de pundum eum vivere. Et abilerunt quidam ex nostris et monumentum, et iter in venerum sicur mulieris dicerunt, ipsum vero non in venerum. Et dice visit a Deus, Os turgi et tardi corde ad fedendum in omnibus, quae locuti sunt profetem? Non e heco potuit fati Christum, et et ita intrare in gloriam suam? Et incipiens amoris et omnibus profetis, inter perfectator ilis in omnibus scripturis, quae di ipsu eran. Et ad opin qua verum castello, qua abat e ban, et ipse se finis sidum vius ire, et corrigerum dium dicente, Mane nobiscum coniam et vesper, et vespes perasit, et inclinate res iam diet, et intravit cum is, et faltum est dum recumberit cum es, acepit panem, et benedixit, ac fregit, et corrigebat is. Et repetis sunt oculi eorum, et conoverum teum, et ipse et veram iuit ex oculis eorum, et exerunt ad invicem. Non ne cor nostrum artens erat in nobis, domno queretur in via ad epereriet in obis scripturas? Et urgentes erat in porre de pressis sunt in Jerusalem, et in venerum corregatus nim undicem, et eus cui umilis erant dicentes. Quod surrezit dominus vede, et e parvit Simoni, et ipse naraban que gesta aveant in via, et quomo dopo noverum teum in frazione pais. Laus. Tibi Christ. On this Easter Monday, the second day in the Paschal Octave, the lesson is taken from the book of the Acts of the Apostles by St. Luke. At this time, Peter, standing in the middle of the crowd, spoke thus, Men, brothers, you have heard the story, a story which ran through the whole of Judea, though it began in Galilee, after the baptism which John proclaimed, about Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, so that he went about doing good and curing all those who were under the devil's tyranny, with God at his side. We are witnesses of all he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. And they killed him, hanging him on a gibbet. But on the third day God raised him up again and granted the clear sight of him, not to the people at large, but to us, the witnesses whom God had appointed beforehand. We ate and drank in his company after his rising from the dead. And he gave us a commission to preach to the people and to hear, bear witness that he, and none other, had been chosen by God to judge the living and the dead. All the prophets bear him this testimony, that everyone who has faith in him is to find remission of sins through his name. And the Holy Gospel today is that according to St. Luke. At this time, two of the disciples of Jesus were walking to a village called Emmaus, sixty furlongs away from Jerusalem, discussing all that had happened. They were still conversing and debating together when Jesus drew near and began to walk beside them. But their eyes were held fast, so that they could not recognise him. And he said to them, What talk is this you exchange between you as you go along, sad-faced? And one of them, who was called Cleophas, answered him, What, art thou the only pilgrim in Jerusalem who has not heard of what has happened there in the last few days? What happenings? he asked. And they said, about Jesus of Nazareth, a prophet whose words and acts had power with God and with all the people, how the chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and so crucified him. For ourselves, we had hoped that it was he who was to deliver Israel. But now, to crown it all, today is the third day since it befell. Some women, indeed, who belonged to our company, alarmed us. They had been at the tomb early in the morning and could not find his body. Whereupon they came back and told us that they had seen a vision of angels, who said that he was alive. 
Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found that all was as the woman had said, but of him they saw nothing. Then he said to them, Too slow of wit, too dull of heart to believe all those sayings of the prophets? Was it not to be expected that the Christ should undergo those su these sufferings and enter so into his glory? Then, going back to Moses and the whole line of the prophets, he began to interpret the words used of himself by all the scriptures. And now they were drawing near the village to which they were walking, and he made as if to go on further. But they pressed him, Stay with us, they said. It is towards evening, and it is far on in the day. So he went in to stay with them. And then, when he sat down at table with them, he took bread and blessed and broke it and offered it to them, whereupon their eyes were opened, and they recognised him. And with that he disappeared from their sight. And they said to one another, Were not our hearts burning within us when he spoke to us on the road, and when he made the scriptures plain to us? Rising up there and then they went back to Jerusalem, where they found the eleven apostles and their companions gathered together, now saying, The Lord has indeed risen, and has appeared to Simon. And they too told the story of their encounter in the road, and how they recognised him when he broke bread. Ave Maria, grazie plena Dominus tecum, benedicta tu mieribus, benedictus ucus ventris tui Iesus. Santa Maria, Mata Dei, or pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc in terrare mobis nostre. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. The Lord has indeed risen and has appeared to Simon. Carissimi, beloved in Christ, welcome to this broadcast mass. As we said, on this, the second day of the Paschal Octave of Easter. Now, of course, you may remember we mentioned it yesterday that so uh, joyous is uh, Holy Mother Church's jubilation at the celebration of the resurrection of our Lord that every day of these eight days from Easter Sunday through to Low Sunday are considered to be Easter Day. All eight days are Easter Day. Now this shouldn't be uh, so hard for us to appreciate having of course ourselves realized and just experienced the timelessness of God through the divine mysteries during the sacred liturgies of the Triduum, of Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday, we were, when we were ourselves invariously transported out of this chronological and linear time that we know it and understand it and experience it, to the timelessness of God, so that we were in the upper room, we were at the foot of the cross, and we were in the empty tomb. Now we enjoy the resurrection for these eight days. We enjoy, as it were, it all. Uh, uh, seemingly in one day in God's timelessness. So continue my brothers and sisters to eat and be merry, uh, to rejoice and to sing psalms and hymns and canticles to the Lord and give thanks to God for his great goodness toward us in the fulfilment of his redemption, in the fulfilment of our redemption in Christ by virtue of his passion, death and resurrection. No more fasting, simply feasting. But of course, don't forget to pray. We are still, my brothers and sisters, bid to pray. We are still, while we yet experience uh, life in this chronological and linear progression, we are still then uh, invited to pray. To pray by attending the sacred liturgies so that we may indeed continue to experience God's timelessness as we enter into the timelessness worship of heaven through the angelic hymn, Holy, 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 but also, too, so that we may enter into God's timelessness in our own prayer, in our own prayer lives, in our own spiritual conversations with God, who is our Father. This, my brothers and sisters, is how we, now, in our own time, experience the corporal resurrection of Christ. We, though we do not see him as the apostles first saw him, though we do not see his incarnate form, yet the mystery of the incarnation is such that we still yet experience him corporally through various means. And during this week we will explore and uh, reflect on the various ways in which we, as Christians now in the 21st century, may yet still experience the corporeal resurrection of the Christ. And today, Holy Mother Church turns our thoughts directly to the first impression uh, of uh, the corporeal presence of Christ in our own lives. We who 
by virtue of his resurrection, live his resurrection life as we reflected yesterday, our eternal life that began at our regeneration in baptism when we became citizens of heaven, is all by virtue, is all enabled, empowered, is possible by virtue of his corporeal resurrection. We, of course, living in hope, our Christian hope, of our own corporeal resurrection when we shall, as St. Paul says, all be changed in an instant, in a twinkling of an eye, this corruptible shall be transformed into an incorruptible existence. But all of that, of course, has yet to come. And even though we die, yet shall we live. Even though we will experience mortal death, yet spiritually, of course, our, our eternal life will continue on. Death is no end for us, we might say it is, but the beginning of the end. For us who believe, we go through that veil that was torn asunder in the temple into the nearer presence of God. We enter into the holiest of holies. Death has no dominion over us who have been saved. And we are saved primarily, of course, by the remission of our sins, by that absolution given to the apostles and in their turn passed on by the Holy Spirit through the church, empowering priests and bishops to forgive us our sins in the name of God. And it is God by Christ who forgives us our sins. When the priest in the words spoken to us in the confessional says, Ego te absolve peccatoribus tuis, it is our God himself who speaks. It is Christ himself, the manifestation of God's love, who speaks towards us those words of peace and reconciliation with God. Your sins are forgiven you. And then, of course, we are reminded of those words he spoke to the sinner who washed his feet with her hair. Go and sin no more. Your faith has saved you. That faith which we, my brothers and sisters, should possess, such as the centurion possessed. That faith that astonished even the Christ, who had not seen such faith in all of Israel. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. These words immortalized for us as our response to the invitation at Holy Communion. Ecce, on you stay, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And we, my brothers and sisters, of course, then are ourselves experiencing that gospel which Peter himself preached, that uh, sermon given for us in uh, the Acts of the Apostles today for our epistle, for our lesson reading, recorded. Uh, tradition says by St. Luke. We hear that first, that wonderful sermon preached by Peter about the Christ, and particularly, of course, ending there, reminding us that the good news is about the forgiveness of sins. All the prophets bear him this testimony that everyone who has faith in him is to find remission of sins through his name. That, my brothers and sisters, is in the first instance how we as Christians, as people in the 21st century, may experience the corporeal resurrection of Christ in that power of his name which is given to the church and which means that the convert, the sinner, is able by faith, by, faith, by belief in his name, by trusting in his name, to receive through that power the absolution of sins. And here, my brothers and sisters, is one of the reasons why it is so important for us as Christians, particularly in the 21st century today, to remember this first sermon, as it were, of the Apostles, spoken by Peter, that refers to the remission of sins. There are so many today, my brothers and sisters, and, and sad to say, even Christians, who no longer believe in sins. They say, we don't know what sin is, we don't believe in sin. What is sin? And of course, this is a great shame. This is a, uh, a manifestation of the lack of catechesis, the lack of basic teaching uh, in the churches today. For of course, that uh, which separates us from God is sin, is primarily sin. When God first conceived of us and brought us in, into existence, and uh, it is uh, figured for us allegorically, as it were, in the story of Adam and Eve and in the book of Genesis, we were one with God. And that how, was how God desired 
us to be as humanity, to live with him, to share in the goodness and enjoyment of his creation. But we sinned, we transgressed, and we continue to transgress. And how do we transgress? We transgress by breaking his commandments, by breaking his holy law. So we learned, of course, and we're reminded during the prophecy of the, the, after the lighting of the Paschal Candle at the uh, Easter Vigil, we were reminded uh, of our need for salvation. We were reminded how uh, we were given the commandments. We were told, God told the people of Israel how to live in love and in union with him. All the time, of course, uh, they were uh, rebelling. Uh, against him, rebelling against the commandments. And, of course, as our Lord explained to us in his gospel, it is not just about the letter of the law, it was not just about uh, thou shalt not, but it was about the spirit and the motivation of the law, which itself is love, which itself is charity. Remember our Lord said, all the summary of the law is contained in these two commandments, these the greatest commandments. Firstly, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And the second is this, love your neighbour as you would love yourself, as you would be loved in and with by God. And so it was that God himself severally said to the Israelites in the Old Testament, even though he had told them how they ought to worship him, even though he had told them this is the law of worship, this is, you should offer these sacrifices, you should burn incense, you should burn animal offerings, etc. And even in his own frustration with them, he said, actually, do you know what, it's not even about the sacrificed holocaust of burnt offerings. It's about your hearts, it is about your hearts, it's your hearts that I want. And remember, we ourselves were reminded of this on Ash Wednesday, turn to me, the Lord God says, with all your hearts. So it was that during uh, uh, Lent we ourselves, in our period, spiritual lives and discipline, were honing our hearts toward God. And in Passion Tide we were uniting our hearts with God's heart, the sacred heart of Christ, in his passion as he was going to die for us. Why? Because of our sins. But so that we might be forgiven and have eternal life. Thus, my brothers and sisters, those Christians who take away sin, who say, don't worry about sin, we don't worry about sin, the sin is nothing, don't worry about sin, we, we're all human, we all fail, we all have failings, we all make mistakes, don't worry about sin. That's why, my brothers and sisters, they are not preaching the gospel. How can we hear their voices and then read the words recorded of Peter's own sermon? who makes the point of saying all the prophets bear him this testimony that everyone who has faith in him is to find remission of sins through his name. It is sin that separates us from God. Christ conquers sin by conquering death that mortal death that we all experience and will experience because of sin. Christ takes away the sting of death so that when we die, we are not no more, but rather we have the possibility to continue with him into his new kingdom when we will receive a new existence, a new physical existence, perhaps something alike and akin to his own resurrection existence, like his resurrection body. But in order for that to happen, we have to come to realise that we are children of God, that we were made by him, for him, and to be with him. Remember that, uh, that uh, question from the Penny Catechism, and this is, this is where, you see, uh, we, we, we can point uh, to where so many contemporary Christians have fallen away from the gospel because they have not been catechized properly. Because as we, I hope, as faithful Orthodox Catholics, will remember from our penny catechism, from the little penny catechism we were given in preparation for our confirmation. Why did the Lord God make you? He made me 
to know him, to love him, to be with him now and forever. And coming to faith is about realising that basic essential truth of our existence, of our reason for being. That is why each and every one of us is born into the world. Why each and every one of us is conceived to be born into the world. Why the gift of life is so precious. Because it is by the gift of life that we are enabled to receive our true calling. To hear God's voice and invitation to be with him. To enjoy his company forever. But in order for that to happen, we have to recognise that which separates us from him, which is sin. We have to recognise that rebellious spirit within ourselves, that instead of turning to him, we'd rather turn to the world and enjoy all that the world has to offer in this life. And as Jesus himself says, those who do that have their reward. If that's what you want to do, if you have no interest in the fullness of what is to be, of what is coming, of what will be. If you only want to enjoy this shadow existence of the world, as God conceived it, then you have your reward. You enjoy yourself in this life, but you are not enjoying everything that there is, not enjoying everything that there will be, not enjoying everything that is to come. You are not enjoying in this life Life as God intended us to enjoy it. But God intended us to enjoy life with him. And that will be when Christ comes again and the new kingdom, the new heaven and the new earth come in. And everything in scripture tells us that's worth waiting for. That's worth waiting for, to experience life as God had intended us to experience life. And of course we are bid as Christians to, to enjoy and to look for and to try and to create in this life something of that life which will be. We ourselves, remember, are called by Christ to be signs and pointers to the kingdom of God in us. For we are as citizens of God, of heaven, of his kingdom. To be signs and pointers. To be ourselves the beacons of light and hope to the world, to our own generation, to draw them to himself, that they may recognize that they are his children, that they were purposed by him, and that the purpose he has for them is so much better, so much more than the way in which we may experience life in the here and now. But even more than that, that he may empower us to enable to demonstrate and experience ourselves and for others something of what that new life will be. Which is what Christ meant when he told us that we are to be lights to the world. To be the salt that has not lost its savour. To be not like those who focus everything on this present life. Not like those who have forgotten or who don't know why they were born, why they were conceived, why they were in God's mind from all eternity. To enjoy him forever in eternity. But through choice, through true love, God did not make us and has not made us automatons that we uh, only can love him. He gives us a choice. Because true love must, of course, be born its, of itself. It must be voluntary. It cannot be imposed. It must come from within itself, even. True love is self-giving. True love is not selfish. Remember, just before uh, Ash Wednesday, on the uh, on Quinquagesima Sunday, we were given that wonderful epistle from 1 Corinthians, by St. Paul, describing to us what true love is, what true charity is. It is not selfish, it is not self-serving. It is always kind, patient and humble. 
And if we, my brothers and sisters, as Christians, lived that charity, lived that love in this world, in this time, then others would too come to be drawn toward God's love, God's charity, which is so much more than we can demonstrate. They would come to know him then and to love him and to realise by making that choice, by making that decision, by realising through teaching, through the explication of the scriptures of all the prophets, by hearing and receiving as they on the road to Emmaus heard from the words of the word himself, they would come to realise why they exist, for what purpose, and choose for themselves. So our first lesson, Holy Mother Church reminds us today of how, by the power of the resurrection, we may truly know God and receive our eternal life. And secondly, of course, the second lesson is in the breaking of the bread. It is at that moment that these two disciples, Cleophas and his companion, recognised the Messiah, recognised the Christ recognized Jesus. And it is how we, my brothers and sisters, it is how we, it is one of the ways in which we experience the corporal resurrection by ourselves beholding and seeing the wonder of the incarnation in the Holy Eucharist of the altar. By ourselves beholding the miracle of Bethlehem where spirit and creation are reconciled in the person of Christ. And by virtue of his resurrection, we now are able to receive that new manna from heaven, that bread of life. Remember, he himself said of himself, I am the bread of life. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life. You will not have eternal life. We who eat this bread and drink this cup, Proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes again, when real new life will come to existence. But that life we can experience now. And in the bread and the wine of the Holy Eucharist, we glimpse the body, blood, soul and divinity of the resurrection body of Christ. We see the power, we behold the power of that life which is the light of men as we hear at the end of every Mass from the prologue of St. John's Gospel. Life is Jesus. Jesus is life. That's the whole point. Again, these contemporary Christians who dismiss any divinity, any aspect of mystery towards Christ's existence and say he was just a man. He was not just a man. If he was just a man, there'd be no point. No point in the Gospel at all. It is the very point that he is more than just man. That he is God-made man. That is the whole point of the gospel. For he is life. And he brings life. And he offers us life. This is why life is such a precious gift. This is why the sanctity of life is such an important uh, pillar of the Church's teachings and of our understanding and approach toward life. Jesus is the very life that is the life of the world. The Ruach Elohim, the spirit that breathed upon the waters, the very energy and force that created all things is Jesus. The wisdom that was poured forth from the mouth of God the Most High, creating and ordering all things, was Jesus. So when he says, I am the resurrection and the life, this is what is meant. When he says, I am the bread of life, this is what he meant.
resurrection signifies for us. Not just the resurrection of one man's body, dead body. In Christ, we saw that with Lazarus. A week before, we saw that with Lazarus. That's what happened to Lazarus. Lazarus was dead, then he was made alive. He was dead and then he was resurrected. If that's all there was to it, then Christ himself need not have died and been resurrected. Christ's resurrection is so much more than Lazarus's was, or the widow of Nain's son, or of those resurrections from the Old Testament that were presented to us in Lent. The raising of the uh, widow of Sarephta's son, or the Samaritanite woman's son. Resurrection had been done before. If it was just about resurrection, well, that wouldn't be the gospel. That's just the whole point. The Christ's resurrection is not just his resurrection, it's not just the resurrection of what was his body to, new, to life, but it's the resurrection into new life. His resurrection, the power of his resurrection, is that same life that brought the universe and life into existence. If we could have been in the tomb and witnessed that resurrection power, it would have been like seeing that same power that brought the universe into being. It would be like seeing the Big Bang happen in that confined space. Such power. But not power uh, like a bomb that is destructive, but a power that gives life. The power of the resurrection in the tomb did not disintegrate the tomb, did not blow up the hillside, did not kill the soldiers. Because its power is life itself. So it enhanced life. It is by virtue of that power that we who believe in his name, who confess our sins, who repent of our sins, who turn with all our hearts toward God, then through the regenerative waters of baptism are given new life, this new resurrection life, this life in the resurrection of Christ, this eternal life. And so when we pray, and we should pray, my brothers and sisters, the Pater Noster, the Our Father, every day. Indeed, in all our private prayers, we might begin with the Pater Noster. Those of you who, follow, who pray the Divine Office, the Liturgy of the Church, the Hours of the Church, will know the Our Father is always there. We begin always. Pater Noster, creating changes. And we pray, give us this day our daily bread. And that daily bread, my brothers and sisters, is not the physical sustenance that is required for our physical bodies in this life. The word in, used uh, in, the, the, in the Greek is epicious, super substantial bread, is the literal translation. Not just daily bread, but super substantial bread. It is the Eucharist. It is the bread of life. It is the body and blood, soul and divinity of him who is the resurrection life. Who enables us to experience the resurrection life now and with the hope and promise of the future. Which is why it's so important if we are unable, and the whole purpose of this broadcast, if we are unable to attend Mass and to receive ourselves, and behold, the corporeal resurrection of our Lord in the um, in mystery of the Incarnation and in the presence of his body, blood, soul and divinity in the Eucharist of the altar, then we ought to make a spiritual communion. That is why our Lord gave us those words to pray. Lord, teach us how to pray. This is how you pray. Give us this day our daily substantial bread. That we might have at least a spiritual communion with him by praying. We 
my brothers and sisters who believe in him, believe in his name, like the disciples in Emmaus, we can behold him. We can recognize him. We can recognize the fulfillment of all the prophets, the fulfillment of all the scriptures, the fulfillment of all his promises, the fulfillment of all his scriptures, the fulfillment of all our faith, the fulfillment of all our purpose in life, the fulfillment of why we are here and why we are going. All this we behold in the breaking of the bread. Let us, my brothers and sisters, take these two lessons to heart. Let us avail ourselves of the power of the resurrection by receiving ourselves the absolution of our sins that we may then experience fully and truly and with a view to that new everlasting life which is ours through baptism and ours continually through the remission of sins and for which we may be sustained in this life with a purpose and view toward that end life by ourselves beholding the miracle of Bethlehem upon the altar, by ourselves beholding the crucified priest and victim on the altar, and by ourselves witnessing the corporeal resurrection of him who is the bread of life. Of him who created life, who thus can create and recreate and transform himself into such a means by which then we may eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood and have eternal life. Let us take these lessons to heart. And as we endeavoured at the beginning of Lent to renew our spiritual lives, to renew our relationship with God, to turn with all our hearts back to him, let us now, imbued by the power of the resurrection, by knowing of the power of the resurrection to transform our lives, so now determined to live our lives in the power of that resurrection, in the power of that new life that has been given to us through baptism, of the promise of that Christian hope of our own receipt of a new resurrection body in a new earth and a new heaven where we who have been made go inheritors of his kingdom will experience the same. Remembering that he made us and purposed us to know him, to love him, and be with him, both now and forever, who is God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven. And was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us 
and a bounteous island. He suffered and was very and And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again in glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Uh, Dominus Obiscum, et cum Spirito Tuo, Ornebus. Angelus Domini de Sceni de Cielo, et dixit mulieribus, quem quenitis sur exit sicut dixit, Alleluia.
secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus obiscum, et cum spiritu tuo, sus un corda, habemus ad dominum, gracias ad amus domino Deo nostro, dignum et justum est, vere dignum et justum est, e come salutare, te quidem domine omni tempore, sed in hoc pochissimum die in gloriosius predicare, un pascol nostrum immolatus est Christus, ipse et un venus est amus, cui absturi peccato mundi, qui morte dostrans, moriendo d'ostruxi, et vitam resurgendo reperavi, et ideo cum angelis et archangelis, cum tronis et dominationibus, cum quae omnia melicia celestis et cegitus, in un gloria et tuae calibus, sine fine dicendos. Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus Sabaoth, pleni sum celi et terra, gloria tua, usanna in excelsis. Benedicus qui venit in nomine Domini, usanna in excelsis.
solo quei viaggiatori. Secula seculorum, anche orde precepti salutari vos moliti de bene sozioni pomati, allemus dice, ad noster qui es in cei, sanguini cei con nomo tuum, ad veni ad regnum tuum, fie volontas tua, sicut in cielo et in terra. Ad nostrum parabiamo de nobis odie, limite domi, debita nostra, sicut de nostri minimus debitoribus nostis, ad meno si ducas in tentazione, Se libra la nostra mano. Perro mia secula seculorum, anche, ex domini si cempero vobiscum, et cum spirito tuo. Ecce annus Dei, ecce qui tolit peccato mundi. <coughs> Domine, non sinimus, ut in te suttectum meo, se tantum dec verbo, et sen natitur anima mea. Domine, non sinimus, ut in te suttectum meo, se tantum dec verbo, et sen natitur anima mea. Domine, non sinimus, ut in te suttectum meo, se tantum dec verbo, et sen natitur anima mea. Brothers and sisters watching Mass online and unable to receive the Blessed Sacrament, we invite you now to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that thou art present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love thee above all things, and I desire thee in my soul. 
since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though thou wert already there, I embrace thee and unite myself wholly to thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from thee. Amen. Su rexi dominus et aparvit petro. Alleluia. Dominus obiscum et cum spirito tuo. Alleluia. Spiritum nobis domine, tuae caritatis infunde, ut cum sacramentis vascalibus asiasti, tua facia spietati concorde. Per Domino nostro, via Iesu Christum, Filium Tuum, qui tecum vivit arrenia, dum unitate iustum Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus obiscum, et cum Spirito Tuo, ite misa es, Alleluia, Alleluia. Deo gratias, alleluia, alleluia. E 
Dominus obiscum et cum spirito tuo, inizium sancti evangelii secundum Giovannem, gloria tibi Domine. In principio er verbum et verbum eret apu Deum, et Deus eret verbum, hoc erat in principio apu Deum, omnio prips in factus cum se sinso factum, nihil quo factum es. Inizio vita erat, vita erat, lux hominum, lux in tenebris, luce et tenebre, et non comprehende ergum. Quid homum esso se deo con nomine la Giovanna, se venit in testimoni, mo testimoni bevere con lumine, et omnes fedelum per illum. Non era il tiri luce, et o testimoni bevere con lumine, era lux vera qua illumina domnem hominem venientem in hoc mundum. In mundo erat, in mundus frips in factus es, in mundus em con non cognovit, in propria venit etium non in ceperum. Quod quod altem in ceperum deum? Desides vos patim filios de fieri, his vi prendi nomine eius. Qui non est sanguinibus, nex voluntati canis, nex voluntati viris, et ex Deo nascisunt. Et verbum carro factum est. Et habitavit in nobis et vinimus gloria meus, gloria quasi unigenitia patria, plenum gratia et veritatis. Deo gratia.